See them few trees come down there. I'm out in me Yorkshire and it's it's raining, it's gale force winds and I'm stuck behind this turnip head. Yeah, get out of it Rose. Stuck behind this plough jockey. <laughs> Goes up. See you later. I've got my wetsuit in the bag and I'm gonna go free diving for crayfish. Anyway, I can turn you off so that I can pump my tunes out and uh, get psyched up for some uh, some adventuring. My bag's well heavy, so I've got all my weights because I know the the river's going to be quite shallow, so. You need a, a lot of weight to counter the buoyancy of the wetsuit, so the bag is this heavy, mate. Whew, let's go. It looks, whoa, it looks brown. I don't know if my camera's gonna survive this, it's not waterproof. <laughs> Am I going to survive it? Ah. <laughs> Look at it, it's a bit brown, isn't it? It's a bit, br it's a bit bobby brown. It is heavy. I get this bad boy out and then should I put this over you lot? That might work. Or will it just catch the wind a bit too much? Look at that, look at that. Can you still see there? That we, we, thing over your head. Oh, no. Is that working or not? I don't know. It's best I've got, mate. In these conditions, it's best I've got. I'm a qualified free diver and I'm a strong swimmer, so. Hold on. Let's get your dry off. And I've got me uh, 10 metre swimming badge from school, so it's, it's not too bad for me. But don't do it. Like, if you if you see this and you think, oh, I'll have a go at that, please err on the side of caution. Be safe. Safety first. Look at this, man. Look at this setup I've got you on. <laughs> hey. Trying to keep you protected from, from rain, mate, so you probably can't hear me. Anyway. Yeah, the river look the river looks like it's going so quick. With such an undercurrent that I'm probably not gonna be able to stay stationary or at least, you know, it's gonna just push me down and I won't be able to find anything. And if I'm not gonna get out, what's that's not gonna make a very good video, is it? But you don't go you don't know as I say so I'm just gonna get in anyway stop waffling on about it and get in I'm doing it I'm getting in I don't care now uh, <laughs> look, even brought me a little knife because you know that's all I've got if I'm gonna dispatch them or always always dive with a knife on you if you're gonna be in like ideally if you get caught in anything it's good to just have a knife to cut it off you the torch because it's looks pretty dark in there <laughs> a plate for me optimistic catch i got a net as well my lobster net which saves me getting out i'll just put them in there i'm again a bit optimistic mate but that's life gloves yes yes and then my wetsuit Socks. Uh, duds. Panties. Just a little bit of conditioner into the suit. Mix it with a bit of water and then it just it slides on a lot easier. So you just you nip off nip off the bottoms, fill this full of water and conditioner, and you can use this and then rub it on your on your on yourself. If I, if I slip and fall in to black in it and then I'll use that same water in here as well or I'll pour it all over my foot either either mate either works pour it all over your foot happy days okay all right then 
Not mucking about now. Real, real as it comes. Ooh. Oh, dude. Cold. <laughs> That's cold, mate. Any dog walker is going to think I've lost me, lost me marbles, like I've slipped off the cracker. This is my knife. It's now, it's mainly just a, uh, like a thin pointed one. It's got a bit of a serrated edge there, in case you get caught in any ropes or anything. But it's what it's mainly for, or what I have it for, is just to kill the fish if you know, brain them if you get them. But I wear it because it's just safety first, isn't it? Especially when you're on your own. You get caught in some ropes or weeds. It's there, it's on my it's on my ankle so I can just reach down and grab it. Right, if I don't see you anymore any again, and someone finds this, can you upload it to uh here's outdoors YouTube channel because I'd just like to say goodbye to everyone and thanks very much for the support over the years. It's uh it's really meant a lot to me. Right, let's switch to GoPro. I'm just gonna check the Check the current, check the visibility, and have a few dives down. See if I can see any sign of any crayfish. And if I do see some, I'll come back and get my uh, my net and torch. Uh. Right, here we go. Let's get in. That current is strong. I managed to just jump my feet in between two rocks here to get my breath. But every time I dive, I'm fighting the current so much that I'm losing my breath hold. <laughs> God, I love it there. Change of plan. Is it working? This isn't working, so I'll maybe go try swim down there and get into the side into an eddy. See if the water slacks off a little bit. That's all I've seen. I've been going for about 20 minutes. I've just seen one. So I've got my net. Uh, let's see if I can get a couple. That's two. It's hard work, mate. It's hard grass. 
quite deep here, so I'm going to dive down and see if there's anything in the deeper water. Double whammy! Ah. Ah. And these are the American signal crayfish as you can tell by the, the bright orange underneath of the claws they're a lot bigger than our native crayfish starting to get dark now look <laughs> result absolute result it was far too too quick in the middle oh, I'm cold mate it was far too quick in the middle and then when I got too deep it was too dark so I just stayed in the edges in the little edges and stuff where it wasn't so so quick and um, once I got my eye in I managed to get a get a decent amount there oh, man I'm freezing <laughs> yeah! There you go. I got a few and then um, I just sacked the filming off and just focused focused on get, uh, just foraging and managed to get a decent amount like you need a few because there's not a great deal of meat on them so it's not a bad it's not a bad load but you can't see on this camera but it is getting dark now and it's starting to rain again. Ah, so better be quick. Oh. <sighs> yes, mate. That's me uh, me away kit. That that's not the normal. That's the away kit, but it's it's one in W column from for away kit. <sighs> <laughs> all my brain's gone all cold brain head, so I can't really think straight. <sighs> well, I'm happy with that, mate. Well happy with it. <sighs> Fingers are a bit cold, face is a bit cold, but, well, I'm a bit cold. <laughs> Let's go find some decent woodland and get these bad boys cooked up. I'll do one of these ones. I'll see you there. Right. Woodland, it's absolutely bog myrtle everywhere. I've got to chuck my wellies on, but look. Even just the ground. You can see it's just oh, absolutely dripping wet.
I've found uh, I've taken taken refuge under this pine tree and there's a, there's a few pine trees in this area and it's creating a natural sort of it, it, the canopy's keeping me dry the crayfish are in here they've just been prepped uh, I've, I've done this on multiple videos. It is quite simple, you just put the knife, I won't do it now, but, well I will, but I won't show you. Yeah, once you've uh, humanely dispatched them, you see the, uh, the tail here, you can grab the middle bit of the tail and just twist it to one side, it'll click, to the other side, you'll hear it click again, and then you can pull it, I don't know if you can see that there. And that's the track, that's all it's uh, all the insides, just attached to that little bit of tail. And that's him fully prepped and ready for the pot. Bring it to a boil and like four or five minutes, it doesn't take long at all, and then they're good to go. You can obviously pimp up the water a little bit, you know some Cajun spices, some lemon wedges, orange wedges, I think traditionally they use orange wedges and chorizo and things like this. But I'm just, I'm just in woods, so we're just going bareback. That's how I want it. Eat them off the floor. <laughs> See how many I got? It's quite a good haul, isn't it? And you just twist the back end off. There's not there's nothing much in Ed. You can suck out the uh, the brains and stuff. It's quite a good. It's a lovely flavour actually. You just get these little nuggets. Nuggets of meat. <laughs> oh yeah. That was hard for as well. Worked hard for this food. Mmm. That is nice. We'll get a claw on the go. Yeah, the claw's pretty much it's exactly the same. Um Same as uh, a lobster, in the way that you crack it and eat it, and the disp you know where the meat is. Oh, my mouth's watering, mate. Oh yeah, man. And the the um, the claws are a lot more earthy, but more like um almost nutty. I find absolutely delicious, mate. Delicious. Oh, I'm gonna get tucked into these. You don't want to watch me. What do you want to watch? I'll tell you what I'll show you. Um, I'll show you one of my little uh, landscaping projects from last week. Because I know some of you like to see see my work every now and again. So, <laughs> yeah, it was... Um, so, my mate's building the, uh, built this... Uh, it's like a granny flat, I guess. Like a big extension at the back of the garden. Um, we're going to... We started, but we're going to finish it with burning timber Japanese style and cladding it with burnt timber but the whole garden was on a slope covered in brash and bits and pieces and concrete and all sorts of rubbish um, so my job was to find the right level um, and do something with it to make it a usable space so I, uh, I retained it using sleepers and I think it was a, a quite a nice little job so I'll let you have a quick look And there we go. That's the finished patio. I've just used um, big 900s grey Indian stone, sort of brick bonded with the pattern. We've run, I've run, you see that? I've put pipes underneath so we can run wires through here and here, conduit all the way through for, um, for lighting. The decking's in, I've used 
sleeper rails as a retainer and a step up. Left this loose because we're going to run. Ah, it's there. Well, whatever. We're going to run a sunny flow out of here, <laughs> along here, and up, tap into the main drain. And so Shugi Ban, whatever they say. So Shugi Ban, I think it is. It's the uh, Japanese burnt wood. Is started here, and then that's going to clad all this building. But yeah, some tricky levels to play with, but uh, nothing I can't handle. <laughs> there we go, a nice usable space and another happy customer. Oh, I smell like Shamu's ass. I better get going before I totally lose my light. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pack this up and then I'll get out of here. done thoroughly enjoyable for me i don't know if you've enjoyed it or not if you have click the thumbs up button because apparently that helps so and all it is is that in it you don't have to do a lot just that and subscribe and hit the uh, the bell notification below because uh, i'm cranking out a few vids at the moment you don't want to miss them do you you don't want to miss quality content like this and just on a um, just to finish off, I didn't talk much about crayfish because I feel like I've done a few videos on crayfish and I don't want to keep repeating myself, but just for any new subscribers there, don't just go randomly picking crayfish out of the rivers because there are two different sorts. There's the signal crayfish, which is the American um, invasive species, and then there's our native white clawed crayfish, which you don't want to be eating them. Uh, and also you sign up on the you go, go online and get a license and you've got to put in your data and say where you're going because you might you might get a load of crayfish out of one bit of river not really thinking go home you might wash them they might have eggs the eggs go into the into the ecosystem and get you they're so vivacious and they're so brutal they're taking over our waterways and they are a real pest so please just be mindful of it um when you're dealing with them and they are a delicious little pest but they are an invasive species so we need to be just be mindful of it anyway right <laughs> look after yourselves take care namaste